which is Cisco Meraki. We've been a part of Cisco for over four years now, and we've been very quickly gaining momentum as one of the fastest growing business units within all of Cisco. Um, you came to my session probably wondering, what are all these APIs with Meraki? Who here has a Meraki network? Who here has used an API before? So the cloud that we run is a cloud application. It's a, actually, we call it the Meraki dashboard. The dashboard manages all the Cisco infrastructure, including our new, our brand new cameras, which you can see at the Learning Lab. If you go over to the Learning Labs, you can see all these Meraki cameras. You can also manage your phones directly from the same dashboard as your cameras. You can also manage all your Android, iOS, OS X, Windows devices, all from the same dashboard as your phones, your cameras. You can also manage the switches from the same thing as your MDM, your phones, your cameras, and the security appliances, and the wireless. So you can see the value is we have a single application and a single pane of glass for all hardware that comes with an M in the product name. So this is bringing a consistency, a single consistent application for your whole IT stack. And it's always centralized. It's in our cloud. We host it. We manage it. We provide the best possible security on the planet for it. Now we take a lot of that complexity out of your troubleshooting and out of your data center, and we put it into our data center. And so now we're hosting, and you don't have a single server required to manage this infrastructure. And the real benefits of having that cloud-managed solution is now you can deploy and grow and scale up. You don't have to scale up your data centers. So for every region you deploy, you just deploy more access points and more switches. You don't need to deploy a new data center for each region or a new controller for each region. So we've eliminated a lot of that management complexity. As well, we've made it easier for you to license everything and manage everything. So we have a single license for your whole organization. So you no longer have to manage the licensing and renewals. And you also don't have to manage support, because we included support with every license. So when you call support, they have access to the same dashboard that you have access to. You can block us if you want, but we provide great support. When you pick up the phone, the guy who picks up the, the call is going to solve your problem, because he can help look at your network in real time with you without having to set up a WebEx. Now, all of our customers are DNA ready. What does that mean? We'll talk about that in a second. But when we upgrade something, when we enable a new feature, we enable it across over 800,000 networks and over 160,000 customers. So when we do something, we do it globally. So if we add a new feature, you get it. And most of those features, we don't price a feature out. We release a new feature, we give it to you because it's part of your existing product is you're buying into the future proofing. You're buying into our engineering skills to add and improve upon our product. You don't just get the product you bought. You get the product that you bought. Two years later, that product gets improved and improved upon constantly. So how are we DNA? Well, we're cloud managed. You can automate the entire network using our APIs. You can pull data out and do analytics. We even virtualize our products, and everything's virtually not in your data center. We have open APIs that are easy and public, and any developer can learn how to use these APIs. Any IT guy who doesn't call himself a developer, he can also become an expert on the APIs. Uh, and those APIs make us programmable. You can use a CLI with Meraki. You probably didn't know that, but you can use a CLI with Meraki's APIs. But what we're enabling is you to learn how to use Python to write a script or Bash to write a script that uses those APIs so you eliminate all the work that you had to do on the dashboard or the work that you had to do in your, old, your current job. You can automate some of those steps so you have an easier time doing them. As well, we follow the st same standards as all the other web companies, Google, Facebook, Twitter, GitHub. They're all using the same APIs. So you can hire someone that's worked with any API, and they can use the same our API. So it, it makes it very easy to learn one product set and use that same skill set on another product set. As well, we give you developer's environment. So we'll give you hardware if you need hardware to get started on a development project. But I think what I want to translate to you guys is that APIs are the future. It, everyone here loves SNMP, right? SNMP's. Who here uses SNMP? 
Everyone. What's the first letter of SNMP? Simple. And it's everything but simple, right? So we see even the largest customers saying, look, SNMP is not, not working. It's super complex. When you get to super scale, it's not really the best solution. Can we just pull your API? I'm like, yeah, absolutely. I have three APIs, in fact. They have different use cases. We have technology partners that will give you a turnkey product. So you don't even need to go to develop something. You can. We'll talk about that and how you can do that. But we have companies that run their entire business only selling to Cisco Meraki customers splash pages, analytics, automation. And they specialize in our APIs. And those skills are out there and already being developed. But now is a great time because we've recently added a great deal of new information to these APIs. And we've improved them all very recently. So the Captive Portal API is really used for splash pages. Everyone likes splash pages, right? Not really. No one really likes splash pages. You just want to get on the internet, right? But you'll give away your Facebook or your email or your, or your Twitter or your phone number to get on that internet. So you're willing to give up something as long as you get something in return. So Subway did it in Canada. That Boom. They get, gave out six-inch subs and a soup. And people really were attracted to it. And 25% of customers actually use the Wi-Fi. Even though they're there for five minutes, they got the Wi-Fi. They gave their Facebook credentials. Now Subway can learn about their customers. Analytics, there's entire companies that are just focused on tracking how many people are coming into a store. Retailers love that location analytics. You can also use that to identify which offices have the most employees and where you're getting the most usage. And then the dashboard API is really what you need if you have a lot of sites. If you want to automate your deployment, the dashboard API is essentially the automation. It's the control center for everything. So instead of using the dashboard for control, you can use our APIs. And this lets different companies build different solutions. So we're seeing asset tracking. We're seeing mobile apps. We're seeing marketing solutions, automation, and analytics. These are the different categories of solutions that we see out there. And we're starting to put them up on the website. So you go to developers.meraki.com, and it's not just about developing. It's not just about writing code. It's about all the developers out there who have done something really cool. So instead of you bu building it, just go to the website, find a company. This company is Splash Access, based in the UK. They make a million dollars a year selling Meraki Access points. And all they do is sell Splash pages and mobile apps. So they built their entire business just on our APIs. So if they can do it, you can too. And you can leverage their skill set and buy Splash Access's product and put it on top of your Meraki solution. So again, you can go build it or you can partner. And I always recommend before you go build it, go check out what's already out there. Even if you're going to build it and you know you're going to build it, the best way to know what to build is look at your competitors. So I came from the competition. I used to work with... Uh, Aruba and Motorola. I've done a lot of wayfinding apps. I did. I helped on the first Meridian app. I've done a lot of those indoor wayfinding things. And I converted myself to Meraki when I realized that we have all these APIs. We have 10,000 customers that are actually using these APIs. And there's only three APIs. And they're very popular with our customers. And then there's 1,000 people who've already signed up on the site in the last year who want to be a developer. And there's only 50 that I've certified and say, look, I know your solution works for a customer. So we have this very elite group of solutions on that website. And we're seeing 10 million devices a day and 50 million Bluetooth beacons every week being tracked by our massive customer base. And before we start talking about all these crazy use cases, I want to remind you that privacy is really important to Cisco. We don't store people's MAC addresses. And this is a critical in Europe, especially in Sweden and Germany, where laws prevent storing people's MAC addresses. You can go to a website, the Meraki opt-out, and you can opt yourself out of every Cisco customer. No one will ever track you again. We just store your MAC address so that we know not to track you. So you can, put your, you can go opt yourself out of everything we're talking about today from a location analytics perspective. We also, when we store data, we hash it and we anonymize that data so it's not recoverable. A dashboard API is the newest, hottest thing within the API ecosystem. And this is where IT guys can become IT super ninjas. We had a retailer in the US who I worked with. They did this without even going through it with me. They used the API to configure 1,800 sites. And the configuration was done in nine minutes. So they wrote one script, 
and they were done. Now they just had to ship the product to the store, plug it in, and they're done. It was as simple as that. So now you see, you claim the order, create the networks, add the store name, update the store location, bind the device to the network. You still need to get the serial number, so they still have to know which device goes to which store. And instead of shipping it to a staging area and going through box by box and scanning each serial number and shipping to that site, scan, ship, scan, ship, they built their own application so the store manager or the installer at the store could just scan the serial number, type in the store number. And they had to pull some information from their own API, from their own store finder on their own website. They just crawled their own website to pull the store information and put that into their Cisco Meraki cloud. And at the same time, they type in the serial number, then they set the guest Wi-Fi speed. So you can change the template, and you can have this very limited view. They, they save so much time by doing this, they went and built a dashboard. Now, I haven't even shown you what our dashboard looks like, but they built this dashboard on top of our dashboard. So let me show you what the Meraki dashboard can do. So all I do is I go to dashboard.meraki.com. Log in. And you can see, I wasn't kidding when I said we have over 800,000 networks. And we can zoom into different regions. And all I can see is that we have little dots here. We're private. We can't, we can't look into our customers' networks unless you call support. But we do have customers on the left here who have given us the right to dive into their network. So I can look at this stadium in Spain right here. It's the Barclay Card Y Zinc Center. And you can see all the switches and wireless access points in their network. And we can go and we can look at all the wireless devices in the network. So we can pull out all of this information built into the Meraki dashboard. So you might be thinking right now, well, why would someone build a dashboard on top of your already awesome dashboard? Well, the truth is some people have non-Cisco gear. So if you, have, if you want to build a multi-vendor dashboard, you want to build, you have to take that out, data out via API and build your own dashboard. And that, that's a very common use case where you want to have a single view across multiple vendors. So our dashboard isn't going to manage a non-Meraki gear, so you might want to pull that information out. Or you might want to have a different type of report. So we have summary reports built into our dashboard, very similar to what that customer built. So we have that you know, total gigabytes transferred, total SSIDs. Uh, you can see even anomaly, like above average usage for a Tuesday. So we have these built-in analytics and graphs in our dashboard, but this customer said, you know what, I want to build my own. So they went ahead and did that. And they built this image is from Datadog. So they used a tool called Datadog to build their own dashboard. Another use case where you might use this API is a service provider. So and do we have any service providers in the room? So service providers are extremely excited about this API because we actually built it for them. We built it with the largest, Cisco's very largest customers in mind. So you have to deploy 10,000 access points per day. If you have millions of customers, how are you going to do that in a GUI or even a CLI? It's just not, it's a lot of work. You're going to have to scale up your entire resources. So they wanted to automate the entire onboarding process for a new customer. They just wanted to sell Meraki to smaller or medium businesses that they can't provide an engineer to go out to that site and set up. They just want to ship it to the customer. So they did the same thing that my retailer customer did, but they automated their entire ordering process from ordering to licensing to provisioning to shipping to install. And they updated all the device settings. And if you look at it from a workflow, they did the same thing. The customer signs up. They create a new organization for that new customer. They create the customer's network. They bind a template so it gets the same configuration as all the others. And they enable SNMP. Now they can use SNMP for monitoring. Maybe they don't want to use SNMP for monitoring. You could use the API as well. So now in this case, they had a warehouse that scans the device because they don't trust the customer to, to type in a serial number. So they scan it, and they ship it, and they update the device. And now they also update the customer's billing. So they're integrating with, their, with the front end for their customer signup and the back end with their monitoring and their billing solution. So this is the, the type of thing that's possible to integrate with a dashboard API. Now, if you were looking for anything that's in this presentation, I want you to go on your laptop right now to the developer's website. Go to 
developers.meraki.com. And everything I'm talking about is available on this website. Come on, load a little faster. So on the developer's website, you can go and you can find the dashboard API. So click on dashboard API, and it'll take you to a web page. We just launched in the last few weeks a Postman collection. This is your getting started guide. Who, hears a, who here calls themselves a developer? Raise your hand. Need to, exactly. I, I don't even call myself a developer, but I can, I can code a little Python. I can write some scripts. I can use a CLI. I can, I can do this. And Postman is my favorite application, and it's going to be your favorite application. Who here uses Putty? Right. Who here use, uses Postman already? Get Postman. It's actually getpostman.com. And play around with our API. I'll give you a free API key. I'll even give you the free gear if you really need it. Uh, and you can get the collection right here. And once you get Postman, you'll be able to use this as your CLI directly talking to the Meraki backend and to the Cisco Meraki cloud. And we have detailed documentation right here. Uh, if you go to that documentation page, it's a public documentation page, you can access all the different endpoints. So if I do a side-by-side -side comparison between my API docs over here and my dashboard over here, I can go into my, my San Francisco network. I can say, I want to see all my clients on my network. And right there, I can see all my clients, right? So right here, I can search. I can find Colin right here. Oh, actually, I'm not in there in the last day, right? Um, and, and I can see all the devices that are on my network. At the same time, I can do the same thing via API. And programmatically, I can get out all that client information. You're saying, this, who here thinks this looks a little hard? It's OK to raise your hand. It is a, it, it's a little bit harder, right? This is, this is not as easy as clicking, oh, hey, I can search right here on my GUI. The GUI is much easier than a CLI. But if you're going to be a network engineer for the next 10 years, you're going to end up be, being an API expert. Because that's where, that's where the networking world is going. And that's what DNA is all about. And so maybe I want to go change my SSID name. I'll go to my SSIDs. And I can go rename my SSID right here, Meraki DevNet. Now, I can also do that right here in my API. I could write it that via command. And I could do that same command over here. And I can update all those, all those SSID settings are now available. And we're opening up Meraki, which used to be more GUI focused. Now we're opening up the API so you have access to program and configure your network with separate applications. So I want to stop and introduce you guys to another big feature which we have on our dashboard, which is the location analytics. And I showed you a heat map for a second there. But one of the key things that we have built in to our product is analytics. So we tell you how many people are coming by, how, many people, how long people are staying, and how, lo how many people are coming back as loyal customers. So you have this proximity engagement loyalty. And you also have a beautiful heat map. You can track people moving around. And I can show you all that data on the dashboard as well. But you might want this data out. You might not be satisfied with just viewing it in our beautiful graphs. So let me show you what our graphs look here. You can pull all that information out. And you can see I can compare two different sites. I could compare all my stores in California versus all my stores in Texas. I can compare my Sydney office versus my Cisco London office. And I can see how many employees I have. I can see I have 200 employees or 200 employee devices. Divide that by two because everyone has two devices at work um, in, the, in the London office and only uh, less, than 50, less than 100 people in the Sydney office. I can also drill down within a site. I can say I want to look at the San Francisco office. I want to see how long people spend at lunch. So Right here, I can say, OK, this is the whole office. I want to look at just th people in the cafe. Now I can see most people spend 20 to 60 minutes at lunch. I'm one of these people that eats lunch fast. I'm a fast talker. I'm a fast eater. I do everything fast, but except for some things. So. Over six hours, obviously, some, some people spend a little too long at lunch. right? But those are actually probably cafe workers. 
or iPads that are in the cafe area or people that sit right next to the cafe. The WebEx team actually happens to sit right next to the cafe. So if you ever talk to a WebEx person on the phone, they're right next to the Meraki Cafe. Um, now, all that power that we give you in our dashboard is limited by our dashboard. You can't, you can't take this data and export it. Oh wait, yes you can, you can CSV it. So I can download it via CSV, I can open up that into an Excel file, and then I can say, okay, I wanna do a graph of this data right here in front of everybody. Let's do a graph, let's do insert, chart, line graph, done. And I could deliver this nice little report to my boss and say, look, this is how many people were coming in and out of the site at this time. This is our peak hours. But maybe you want this in a different type of format. We have a bunch of partners that will do that work for you so you don't have to create your own reports. You don't have to do this because you can pull that, all that data out can be streamed to you live via API. So that location data is really important for retailers but everybody wants to know who their customer is. So knowing where they are just is an anonymous, hey, I know you were here, but you don't know who that person was. But linking that device, that MAC address to an individual's identity is where you start to step that privacy bound. So what we've created is a privacy-focused Facebook check-in. It doesn't invade people's privacies and it's built in. It's very cool and you get de demographic data like women versus men, well, women and men, not versus. Uh, you also get the age range of people as well. So you can get that data without invading someone's privacy, but at the same time, marketing to people requires you to have some sort of contact information for them. So you wanna know who they are so that you can actually talk to them. So what we see is splash pages. That when I, I said, who loves splash pages, nobody raised their hand because you just wanna get through to the internet. But we wanna get more information about you. We wanna build a loyalty program for your diner so Texas Grill, they did a Wi-Fi splash page and they got 24,000 emails and they started emailing people, say, hey, come back, here's a deal to come back. And they actually got people to come back. Subway did it and they got 17% of people to actually take that deal. Now, mobile apps are the next big thing, are the next, are they're already big, right? Everyone in here has a banking app, right? Everyone in here has a transportation app. Everyone here has a hotel app. These are basic things. But retailers want you to download their app now. And it's hard to get people to install their app. Who here has the Starbucks app? It's not as popular here. But in the US, 20% of people, or actually this is worldwide, 20% of people use Starbucks' app to pay for their coffee. So they're making $2 billion a year. So I don't know how many free coffees they gave away through the app, but that's what they had to do. They put free coffees in the app, $2 off espresso after 2 p.m. I don't know who drinks espresso after 2 p.m. maybe. Uh, but we also have customers that do that. And they've, they've gotten to the point where you can do mobile ordering in your app. Even on your Apple Watch, you can get a notification saying, hey, I'd like to order. And you can order that. And then via Wi-Fi or Bluetooth, you can get a notification that says, hey, Welcome back, your sandwich is ready. And at the same time, message the kitchen to say, hey, put the sandwich in the, in the order window because they're here. So we see this, and this is enabled because we have Wi-Fi and Bluetooth in the same solution. Now, the splash pages are really the key because splash pages can get you to drive downloads of your app, and splash pages can deliver actual business outcomes. So taking these splash pages from just, hey, I want the terms and conditions, to hey, I want to market to you, give me, your, give me your Facebook, let me talk to you. And you can see a demo of this over at our booth at D7 at the Meraki DevNet booth. Um, and this, this is the actual results from a customer. They saw people who connect to Wi-Fi stay longer, they return to the venue more often, and they opt in for offers. They give you their permission to market to them. And then they actually redeem those offers. So there's an actual return on the revenue just doing a simple splash page. Now let's talk about Bluetooth beacons. So this is not an API. We talked a lot about three different APIs. What were they? Location API, dashboard API, and the captive portal API. Beacons are the hot new thing every year we hear. Beacons are the new big thing this year. Beacons are the new big thing. We, we thought they were going to be the new big thing every year. And I think this is the year where we've now added features and partners. So it's now going to be the big year of beacons. I, I can't predict it, but we've had Bluetooth for two years. And we decided to put it into every one of our products. So now every Meraki MR access point that we sell today has a Bluetooth beacon in it. 
So your Bluetooth enabling your network, whether you like it or not, you can turn it off by default, it's off. But it enables new use cases. Asset tracking is the emerging use case. We just launched this in last October, and now you can track any Bluetooth device in range. That means anything that's beaconing out Bluetooth. Now, certainly you can enable Bluetooth on your iPhone and have it beacon, but by default they're not trackable. What is trackable is all these infrastructure beacons that you can install on different things. So you can buy an Estimote and stick it on something. You can also buy, you can also buy a badge and put it on your employees. So that's exactly what we've done. We went and put Bluetooth badges on every employee in the DevNet zone. And I'll show you how we can track all those people in the zone. As well, we're tr able to track Fitbits. So Fitbits are trackable. Who here has a Fitbit on their wrist? Or an Apple Watch? Or any, any type of fitness tracker? We've got, I've, got, I've got a good 10% of fitness trackers out there. As well, the key trackers, right? So your hotel, or you just want to track your own keys. If you have a Meraki access, to point, access point at home, and you're like, I lost my keys, you can at least see, hey, it's somewhere in my house. It's, I can see it's, it's, in my, it's in my back room or it's in my upstairs. Uh, and so you'll be able to locate those keys as well as any assets that you tag. This also is anonymous. So we don't know who those fitness trackers belong to. So, but you can see which fitness tracker is more popular than the others. So we did the Houston Marathon, and we were able to see the Charge HR was the number one fitness tracker in that marathon. But the forerunners, they had three different forerunners were the next follow-up. So forerunners it's clearly getting a lot of traction, um, but you can't, you can't see it by brand there, but you can see that there's a lot of different Fitbit versions in there. So tracking people is always going to require their consent. So we made sure to get consent before we did this, just as a precursor. No, it's not looking good. All right, well, it looks better. Come over to my booth. I'll show you the tracking. We can track all the Bluetooth beacons on a beautiful map to see where they are. Uh, it's not looking very beautiful at the moment. Um, I must have going to have to check out why it's not working. But it, looks, it normally looks really beautiful. You can see within 10 meters accuracy, you can see where someone is on the DevNet floor. And you can click on them, and you can see Marcos Campos walking around the floor. And here's Susie Wee. Uh, our VP and CTO of DevNet. So you can see those people moving around on the floor um, in the Glance application. And we built that application using those APIs, um, and we're featuring it on the website. So try it there and see if that link works. So go check out the, go check out the demo online uh, after. It probably, I'll, I'll make sure it's working. Uh, and then on top of that, you can now pull that into a mobile app. So that asset tracking use case gives you the capability to track people and track their time. But you also see mobile engagement with the mobile apps. And I showed you earlier what some of those apps can do. But if you wanted to go build your own mobile app, you don't need to start from scratch. We'll give you free mobile apps. There's a proximity app that tells you how close you are to the access point, shopping app that pops up ads, uh, and a Spark video app. The Spark video app is pretty cool because what it does is you can start a video chat. You walk into a business, and the Bluetooth beacon says hello to your phone. And the mobile app pops up and says, hey, would you like to start a Spark video? And you start your video chat with your hotel concierge, with your financial advisor at a bank, or just a teller to help you check in at a hotel. So you can enable these types of engaging mobile experiences because we put a Bluetooth beacon in the access point. Uh, and then on the other side, you have your, your, your administrator who's doing the video chat. He's video chatting himself, obviously, in this demo. But he has a Cisco DX80 at home, which he's chatting with via Jabber or Spark to, to, the, to the mobile device. Now, I want to show you what you can do natively on the dashboard as well. So on the dashboard, you can go in and you can see all this Bluetooth information. And I can find all of the Bluetooth devices. And I can actually do it for the DevNet zone as well. So now I'm looking at the DevNet zone that we're sitting in right now. I'm going to pull up DevNet zone. I'm going to show you how easy it is. We set this up in a very short amount of time uh, with just two days. Um, 
you can see the data. In just the last day in the DevNet zone, you can see that we had 1,500 people walk by and we had 421 visitors to our booth. And the people who are in the DevNet zone are spending, in general, more than an hour in this area, or an hour to between 20 minutes and six hours. So we see a lot of people in that area. There are some people that come in and leave within 20 minutes. So those are the people that we're losing, or maybe they came and they got, they got what they wanted and they left. Uh, but the passerbys are the ones that, that you know, they weren't, they're just walking by outside. We're not losing them. But this five to 20 minutes, I wonder why they're not staying in the DevNet zone for more than 20 minutes. Maybe that was enough time for them to walk around, and 20 minutes is all they needed. But I feel like if you're coming to the DevNet zone, you're probably going to be here for more than 20 minutes. So we can see this type of analytics. And we can see that, obviously, most people were first-time visitors. But the occasional visitors shows how many people are on my team that are here every day, so they're being counted as occasional visitors. As well, we can look at the heat map and see where people are moving within the DevNet zone. So built into, the, built into our system, we can do this location tracking, and we can see as people move around. Now, that access point is probably getting a lot of traffic from a neighboring area. And you can see over nighttime, so this is around midnight now. You can see it's quiet. There's no traffic at night. And then as we get closer to the day, 3 AM, you're going to get more and more traffic. So if you're looking to pull this data out, we have labs on our website. And if you wanted to build your own location tracker to do exactly this in your own application, we have that on the developer's portal. So you just, again, go to the website, go to Location API. And in 10 minutes, you could build a mobile, uh, you could build a web-based app that lets you track all the MAC addresses in your network. So we have this location API demo. And this is basically a learning lab that you can go through with a step-by-step -step guide right here. And you, I even have a video showing someone doing it in 10 minutes. So that demo is tracking all of the office, all, every, every Wi-Fi device in the Cisco Meraki headquarters in San Francisco. So you can build this application yourself using the guide on our website. As well, if you wanted to learn how to use the splash pages, we have a splash page lab as well. Uh, so go to, learn, go to developers learning labs, and you'll see all the learning labs. So if you wanted to build your own splash page, you can go right there. And this will take you to the DevNet, sandbox, the DevNet zone. And you'll be able to do the learning lab on the Cisco learning labs web page. For you today, I'm going to show you how to use the dashboard API to get backend access to the dashboard. And the way I'm going to do that is using Postman. So I can open up my little application Postman. And I put on this web page an API key that everyone here can use. So you're welcome to follow along. You can go open up, download Postman. And this is what Postman looks like. And I can look at my history of all my commands right here. And the simplest command that I want to teach you guys today is get organizations. So I'm doing it for my personal API key. And all I'm doing right here is I'm putting in a header my API key, which is my authentication code. And you paste your API key here. You can get that right on your dashboard. And one click, you have your API key. And you can run this command. And I'm going to run it for the sandbox, which you, can, you have the API key on the website. So if you do that, you can get all of the sandbox networks. And we can look at, let's see if we can find the DevNet zone. Zone. DevNet. It's all caps DevNet. Should be there. Oh, wait, it's in the, uh, sorry, it's in the live. So I'll take that organization ID that I have from there. That's the Meraki Live Sandbox. And I just add that to the end of my string. So now I want to know something about that. I say, OK, cool. That's my Meraki Live Sandbox. Now I can add the word networks on the end of that. And I get a list of all my networks. So I can see developer sandbox. I can see the DevNet zone. So here's the DevNet zone that we have right here. And I can say I want to look at 
Now I can shorten my URL to just networks. And I can add that ID on the end, and I can get all the information. So this is the DevNet zone. It's tag demo and partner. And the ID is, this is the ID number of it. Now I can get more information about it. I can get a list of devices in the DevNet zone. So I, here's all of my devices in my network. I can also get the traffic as well. And all of this documentation is, again, on that same website. So you go to the API, dashboard API, and you click on the detailed documentation. And now I can say, OK, what, what call would I like to make? I want to say I want to see the, the traffic for this network. I could do that. Or I can look at the number of the SSIDs that are in that network. So let's say list the SSIDs. So let's do that. Let's do SSIDs. And I can see there's one SSID called DevNet Innovate. And I can see it's whitelisting certain websites. Uh, and I can also see there's another network called Purple and another network uh, called Meraki plus Spark. So I can configure my SSIDs and pull out that information programmatically using Postman. So this is going to be your favorite tool, I think, in the next five years. But I think you should start today. Download Postman, use our API key, explore using it. Now I'm, I'm going to open up for questions. Uh, I'm happy to recap what we talked about. But do you have any questions? I know we talked about a lot. so. No questions? There we go. Say that again. What beacons? What, oh, well, so Meraki will support any beacon vendor that's out there. Um, so we'll, any beacon in the, I call it the Beacon system, we're going to support. So if it follows the, sorry, I can't hear you. Fate well? Sorry, what? Facebook. Facebook Beacon. Sorry, I apologize. Uh, yes, um, Facebook Beacons. I, we, I apologize. I couldn't, I couldn't hear very well over the noise over there. So Facebook Beacons, virtual Beacons. Oh, thank you. Apologies. <laughs> so there's a question about virtual Beacons. So Cisco has a product called, oh, thank you. Cisco has a product called Virtual Beacon. Um, it's actually called the Cisco Beacon Point, and it works with the Cisco Beacon Center. Um, and the Cisco Beacon Center will integrate with Meraki. So Cisco CMX presence Cis will use the Meraki data from the analytics. Uh, and Cisco Con CMX Connect will provide splash pages for Meraki networks. And the Cisco Beacon Center will support the Meraki Beacon. So we are the world's largest beacon vendor uh, for gateways, gate beacon gateways. So we already have the largest beacon network. So CMX is very focused on adding the both the on-prem Halo uh, hyperlocation beacons, because there's a Bluetooth beacon in there. So they'll support both those, as well as the Meraki beacons. I don't believe they've released it. We can double check uh, if, if it's out already. Um, but that is coming in the CMX cloud. So if you go to CMX Cisco or cmxcisco.com, the CMX cloud will it now integrates presence analytics, connect, uh, CMX connect, as well as, uh, let's do last this month. Let's see, or last month. Let's see if there's any data. So you can see data coming in. This is data from a Meraki network going into the Cisco CMX cloud. The same, is gonna, the same Meraki beacons are going to be used in the Beacon Center as well, as well as the CMX Connect. So you can use it for splash pages, for beacons. We don't have our own virtual beacons um, within Meraki. That's a separate product. You can put a, CM, a Cisco beacon point, put it right next to the Meraki AP, obviously four feet apart for best practices. You can put one of those in the same environment, and it'll just add additional accuracy. So their solution is Bluetooth only, and it adds additional Bluetooth accuracy for a mobile app. So you can leverage the built-in beacon as well as part of the fingerprinting. So if you are looking for a mobile wayfinding app, you can look at companies like Funware and, uh, and Accenture has, a, has, has one as well as Lighthouse Systems. So there's a lot of fingerprinting apps out there that can do indoor wayfinding with our beacons or Halo beacons or the virtual beacons. So any other questions? So who here has Wi-Fi enabled on their device? Who here has Bluetooth enabled on their device? 
So I, I see a good 50%. That's, I've been polling every single crowd I talk to, and it's almost always 50% Bluetooth in a large group. Uh, and that's an IT crowd where everyone has Fitbits and, and earpieces. So we're seeing a rise in Bluetooth adoption with, because, due to the use of wearables and Apple Watches and other devices that are Bluetooth enabled. We're starting to see more people use Bluetooth. Uh, but still, Wi-Fi is king in terms of tracking anonymous analytics or tracking large numbers of people. Wi-Fi will give you that analytics, whereas Bluetooth is really centered on that micro location for a mobile app. So if you want that micro location, you can install a virtual beacon or you can install physical beacons. And we'll, we, because we can monitor any beacon, you can install any beacon vendor you want to improve location accuracy, and we can monitor those beacons on our dashboard. Any other questions? Thanks for the great question. All right. Well. I will leave you with one call to action, which is to go to developers.meraki.com. If you are interested and you want to hear more from me, I'll send out a newsletter after, after the Berlin show. Uh, go register under developers. And I'll give you immediate access to our sandbox. So you'll have access to actually see this DevNet zone right now as part of the sandbox. So you can actually look into the DevNet zone and see the same things that I demoed today. Um, you'll also see a link to that Bluetooth badge demo, uh, as well as the other events. So it's a very useful site, and I encourage you to register. If you don't feel like you want to register, uh, and you're really just looking for a solution out there that runs on top of Meraki, check out the different top apps and customer solutions. So we recently launched the stadiums uh, section, as well as splash pages being one of the things we talked about, analytics being another, and automation being another. So if you're a reseller or a partner, Automation is going to be a key part of your business in the future and writing those scripts. So we're looking for those top partners that can really go beyond uh, just configuration and really can build applications on top. And if you want to be featured, also go through the same steps as registering. And email, I'll, you'll get an email from me as soon as you sign up and email me back letting me know that you're looking to become a partner. So we're looking both for developers who want to build things as well as partners who have already built something. Um, so I hope that was helpful. Uh, if, you, if you are DNA Cloud ready, I hope this was helpful for you to realize what you can do and you didn't realize, uh, especially with the new API calls. There's a lot of new stuff. So if you already know all this and you are just looking for what's new, we added a what's new section. So essentially, it's a release notes for the Meraki API. So go there, and you'll see every new feature as we release them for the API. Um, Postman's not a feature, but it's a, a, a big announcement. Uh, and then all the new features, we, get, we launch them on this page. So thank you, guys. Uh, have a good day. Thank you.